So what does Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, and Jeff Bezos all have in common? They all own super mega yachts worth hundreds of millions of dollars that I want to jump off of. But seriously, they also have in common ways that they manage their money. If you're aiming to manage your finances like the top 1%, I'm going to unveil the 75-15-10 rule, a powerful strategy that can help you accumulate wealth no matter what your income level might be. Whether you're earning $30,000 a year or seven figures annually, this system is designed to adapt to your financial situation. It doesn't matter how much money is coming in. By following all of these fundamental steps, you'll be on a path to financial security. And stay to the end of the video and I'll let you know which investment you can invest in that every billionaire is invested in right now. Let's jump straight into it. The first percentage we need to talk about is the 75% rule. And this is the only part of your income you should be spending. For every dollar you bring in, you should only allocate 75% or 75 cents to cover your living expenses. This includes everything from housing and food to vacations and even those little luxuries you might indulge in like your gadgets or your gourmet coffee. If you can keep your spending below that 75% amount, that's even better. But the beauty of setting the 75% limit is that it gives you the flexibility to manage your finances while encouraging two essential habits. The first habit it encourages is a search for more cost-effective alternatives, whether it's choosing regular gasoline or a premium, if your car does not absolutely require premium. Opting for maybe only two to three streaming networks instead of all 300 of them, or shopping at discount grocery stores like Aldi's instead of high-end markets like Whole Foods. Finding ways to save on everyday expenses becomes second nature to you. Through my own experience in working with high net worth individuals and celebrities, I notice a common trait among the wealthy. They are always mindful of their spending. This level of financial discipline is something all wealthy people seem to share. The second habit the 75% rule still is a focus of value. You probably heard financial gurus telling you to cut out the small luxuries like a glass or a bottle, no judgment here, of wine every night that you unwind with after work. Instead, you should save and invest that money. But I believe this approach is missing the bigger picture. Before making any purchase, consider how much value that item brings to your life. If a $10 bottle of wine truly brings you joy, relaxes you, and puts you in a good mood, then that wine is worth far more than a $10 price tag. It's all about getting the most value for your money. Instead of obsessing over small, insignificant purchases in an attempt to save every possible penny, you should be more concerned with the larger expenses. Big ticket items like a new car, luxury vacations, or high-end electronics. These big purchases may provide a temporary boost in happiness, but that feeling often fades quickly. Before long, that $80,000 car becomes just another vehicle serving the same basic function as any other car on the road and becoming a $900 monthly reminder of not planning for your future. If you can manage to keep your spending below 75% of your income, say maybe 60%, then you're already ahead of the game. But here's the critical part. Hold on to that extra 15% you save because I'm going to show you exactly what you should do with it next. Now let's move on to the 15 and the 75, 15, 10 rule. This step is all about securing your financial future by investing. For every dollar you earn, you should set aside at least 15% or 15 cents for investments. These investments are crucial because they allow you to grow your wealth over time, creating a financial cushion that will support you for many years to come. There are two specific types of investment accounts that you should consider to maximize your tax benefits and to grow your wealth more effectively. The first type of account you should look into is a Roth IRA. This is an individual retirement account that offers significant tax advantages. The most notable benefit of the Roth IRA is that your earnings and profits grow tax-free. This means that when you retire and start withdrawing money from your account, you won't owe any taxes on those earnings. To put this in a different perspective, consider the example of Peter Thiel who famously grew his Roth IRA to a staggering $5 billion. And when he eventually withdraws that from his account, he won't have to pay a single cent in taxes. The catch is that you can only contribute money that has already been taxed, meaning it comes from your post-tax income after you receive your paycheck. Because of the significant benefits associated with the Roth IRA, the government do place limits on how much you can contribute each year. In this case, if you're under the age of 50, you can contribute up to $7,000 annually. If you're over 50, that limit increases to $8,000 a year. Opening and contributing to a Roth IRA is straightforward four-step process. First, you need to have earned income, 
which means you must be working for someone else, yourself, or a business you own. Second, visit a brokerage website like Fidelity, Schwab, or Vanguard and select the option to open a Roth IRA account. Third, once your account is open, transfer funds from your regular bank account into the Roth IRA. Fourth, and this is a step that many people often overlook, make sure you are actually invested in funds in your Roth IRA. Too often, people open the account, deposit their money, and then forget to invest it, wondering years later whether their account balance hasn't grown at all. Don't worry about what to invest in just yet. I'll share my favorite investment options with you shortly, ones that will allow you to set it and totally forget it. The second investment account to consider is a 401k. Unlike a Roth IRA, a 401k is an employer-sponsored retirement account, meaning you can only participate if your employer offers one. The significant difference here is that all contributions to a 401k are made with pre-tax dollars, meaning you won't pay taxes on that money until you withdraw it later. The idea is that when you retire, your income will likely be lower, so you'll end up paying less in taxes than you would have while working. While a lot of people go the traditional 401k route, I personally like the Roth 401k. The difference is that your contributions are made with post-tax dollars, money that has already been taxed. So when you go to withdraw your money, you will not have to pay any taxes on it. You can designate a portion of your paycheck to be automatically contributed to your 401k. One of the biggest perks of a 401k is that many employers often match contributions, which is essentially free money for your retirement. The most common employer match is a 100% match on the first 3% of your salary that you contribute, plus a 50% match on the next 2%. While that might sound complicated, hear how it works in practice. If your salary is $50,000 and you contribute 5% of it, or about $2,500, your employer would match that contribution with an additional $2,000. You would have about $4,500 in your 401k for the year, all thanks to that employer match. If your employer offers this benefit, it's a no-brainer to take advantage of it. After setting up and contributing to either one or both of those retirement accounts, the next step is to figure out where to invest your money. But before I dive into my personal investment strategy, let's discuss why investing is so critical to building wealth. Investing is one of the most effective ways to grow your wealth over time. Let's say you decide to invest $200 every month for 50 years, when the average annual return of 10%. By the end of the 50 year period, you will have contributed about $120,000. However, due to the power of compound interest, your total portfolio will be worth approximately $2.8 million. That's the incredible impact of long-term investing. For most people, the best way to invest is through index funds or ETFs. Because to be honest, you're not going to be the next Warren Buffett. Aww. Most people lose money picking individual stocks. But ETFs and index funds allow you to invest in a broad range of stocks all at once, providing instant diversification and reducing your overall risk. Instead of gambling on a single stock that could rise or fall dramatically, you're spreading your investment across hundreds of companies. It's a simple, effective way to build wealth over time. One of the most popular index funds is the S&P 500 index. By investing in this fund, you're buying a small piece of every company in the S&P 500, giving you exposure to the top 500 companies in the United States. This kind of diversification is key to minimizing risk and maximizing returns. The best part about investing in index funds is that it's typically cheaper than buying individual stocks. Plus, index funds have a long track record of delivering solid returns on average about 12% per year over the past 10 years. Some years will be better than others, but over time you can expect your money to grow consistently. For my investments, I prefer passively investing in funds like the SPY because they are easy to manage and have low fees. However, there are plenty of other options out there so you can choose the one that best fits your financial goal. Now let's discuss the 10 and the 75-15-10 rule. This step is all about protecting yourself from unexpected financial setbacks by building a cushion fund. For every dollar you earn, set aside at least 10% or 10 cents for this emergency fund. According to Bank Rate's annual emergency savings report, more than half of Americans would not be able to pay for a $1,000 emergency expense from their savings. That's a crazy statistic and it underscores the importance of having a financial safety net. Your cushion fund is a reserve of cash set aside for emergencies, and I'm not talking about splurging on a dinner out or taking a spur of the moment vacation. This money is for true emergencies, situations where your life or well-being is at risk, such as a medical crisis, your car breaking down, or a job loss. So how much should you aim to save in your cushion fund? Open a spreadsheet, and calculate your monthly expenses, like your rent, your bills, your groceries, etc. Then multiply that number by three. 
If your monthly expenses add up to $2,000, you should aim to save at least $6,000 for your cushion fund, which will cover three months of living expenses. But start small. Start by saving just one month and also break it down by focusing on one expense at a time. This will make it less daunting and eventually you'll get to your savings goal. Just commit to reaching it. But where should you store your cushion fund? While most people default to traditional savings accounts with the big banks like Chase or Bank of America, there are a lot better options out there. High yield savings accounts offer much higher interest rates, allowing your money to grow faster. With a traditional savings account, the average interest rate right now is about 0.5%. If you deposit $10,000, you earn just $50 in interest over the course of a year. But with a high yield savings account, you can earn 4% or more, meaning you earn $400 in interest on that same $10,000. I've included some recommendations for a high yield savings account in the description below, so look at it and do your research. However, it's important to know when to stop saving. Once you built up your cushion fund to cover three months of expenses, you don't really need to keep adding to it indefinitely. At that point, you can stop saving and instead redirect that 10% of your income into more productive uses, like investing or paying down your debt. To wrap things up, if you want to manage your money like the 1%, start by following the 75-15-10 rule. Spend no more than 75% of your income on living expenses. Invest 15% for your future and save 10% to protect yourself from unexpected emergencies. If you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more financial and life tips. Let's tackle debt and finances together. Till next time, peace.